thanks. The, the pleasure is mine to be here. So, uh, as Santi said, I studied medicine and then I did data science, but I must uh, admit that I've been always a nerd and I have always been using computers for everything in my life. So I want to share my perspective of medicine from uh, this crossroad, from the crossroad of computer science and medicine. And I want to, to sh think about humans as a source of data, as a huge source of data that is constantly evolving, that is constantly changing, and that it's the tool that we doctors use to work and uh, it's what we need. And there's been a lot of work uh, on, on the merge of these both worlds, the computer science and the medicine. And we have great products uh, that have helped us doctors to diagnose better, to understand better the patient, and to do better our world. But every time that we try to model this data and that we try to um, create an automized tool from it, we really struggle and it's really difficult because Human data, it's very variable. It's changing every, uh, with the time. And maybe sometimes an anomaly doesn't mean that it's wrong. This guy has six uh, fingers, but that's okay. And the other one has the heart in the other side. But that's okay too. I mean, there is not a problem with that. That's not really a disease, but I'm sure that your algorithm will crash. Because there are two little cases, so tagging them, it's difficult. And if you think about uh, the base data, the data that we tag as doctors, it's hard because it's the inner join of a lot of conditions, of a lot of stuff. And sometimes some of the conditions must be there, but others no. So when you try to get this further and you try to get it into the level of uh, a patient, you must see that it's, it has even another dimension because it's all these little inner joints of a lot of conditions with uh, the dimension of time because it's evolving, it's changing as I just said. So if we try to express this, it's really, really difficult. Well, maybe if I'm talking to another doctor, it might be easy because it can be intuitive. But if you try to read, to write down all this information, even with plain text, it's hard and it's difficult. And nowadays there is not really a good tool that helps us to express this complexity of a patient, of a patient's data. There's been a lot of work on this and one of its, its archetypes that it's uh, tried to get a lot of doctors working on defining all the variables for each disease but the problem with this is that when you try uh, to give the, the interface to it, the, the GUI for the doctors for uh, getting all the data in order, is that you end up with endless questionnaires, endless forms that they may fill up. But maybe these uh, questionnaires do not show the real patient that you have in front of you. Because the model is already there and it might be biased because as I told you, you can never put all the data of uh, one of those uh, little models. The, the other way of working is just giving freedom to the doctors and then to try to analyze and to understand what doctors wrote. But this is really difficult because we usually do not have time to write down everything correctly and big players are really struggling with natural language processing of these texts because there is a lot of information and you must try to understand it. For example, in, in this case, we, we just want to know if the patient smokes or not. And we have two positive inputs, two negative inputs, and a neutral one. And the, the reality is that she just quit smoking like three weeks ago, and that's why we have like the mixture of variables, someone's positive, someone negative. So we, we think that the, 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 the clue is trying to get the best from both Worlds and trying to give the doctors the building blocks. So they will build the model for each patient, being each patient a personalized model, a model that it can be uh, analyzed individually and it's personalized to, to, to the real patient. And this is uh, possible right now thanks to the technology that is evolving and thanks to th things like graph databases that let you express this complexity and store it in a way that it's friendly for the computer and in a way that we can analyze it later on. So h hold this for a moment and let's get back to the patient again and let's try to model the patient as a graph. We can take 
all the medications, all the diseases, everything that the patient has is, is an order and we can let the doctors connect those nodes and put information on the edges so we have even more information and really try to represent the, the patient that you have in front of you. And then ask the, information, uh, ask the database for the information and ask it in a way that maybe for a doctor it's even intuitive, but this is something that it's not yet done. So this is something that we are trying to, to research on. And we think that try to find patterns in a way that we have, we can make like uh, complex queries that are normal for doctors can be the clue. And if we go even one step beyond and we try to automaticize this pattern finding no, in, and we try to put machine learning on it, it's the moment where it really gets exciting because we can try to find out those patterns that may be hidden and maybe a doctor haven't realized yet. Until, well, until now it was quite complicated, but now it's getting possible thanks to the evolution of technology and, and new things like deep learning because graph databases are very, very noisy, but these new algorithms are really helping us to try to find out models and patterns inside these subgraphs and really try to find out more. But this is cool. But this is not the reality. The reality is that doctors are very uh, far away from this and that we need to provide them with the tools so they really modelize each patient this way. So this way each patient will be part of uh, data-driven medicine where each patient can be uh, used to a study. So if we really want as doctors to go farther and to find out new insights, we really need today to start storing the data in a way that we will be able to analyze it later on. So that's everything. Thank you very much for coming. And I hope I can help you with everything.